At AIA Australia, we have the tools and support to help you grow your business. Available 24-7, our Business Growth Hub offers an online suite of resources such as marketing tools and help to build out your health and wellbeing proposition. If you're looking for a trusted business partner, chat to your AIA CDM today. Uh, today, uh, we're joined by a very special guest. He's uh, the superstar of financial advice, innovator of the year, business okay. of the year, uh, legend of everything, including his own mind, James Millard from YOLO. Uh, welcome, James. Thank you very much, Ben. That's um, a second to none on, on introductions for me, I think. <laughs> I do. I, I aim to please. Uh, we've also got the lovely Naomi Christopher from uh, from the XY crew joining us, um, and a special thanks to our mates at AIA for uh, for supporting XY Lives. So today, look, we're we're talking all about uh, blogging, and I think this is something that's becoming more and more uh, topical as people uh, come up with you know different ways to connect with with their clients. Um, so we're going to hear a bit of James's story. He started a blog. Uh, a little while back and uh, dive into, you know, how it's worked, how he approached it uh, and, 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 you know, what you can do if you, if you want to uh, move into this space. So, James, uh, can you just give us a bit of an, an overview of uh, how this all came about and how this fits in with your financial advice? Yeah, sure. So, mate, I, um, I guess we went to FinCon last year and that was probably one of the big, the big kickers for this. Um, I guess my... my my role, my experience has come from starting in the student about 12 years ago and, and growing fairly quickly into management roles. I was managing a lot of teams. Um, prior to that, we did a lot of travel and, we, and I've always made that a big part of what I do. Um, and then I kind of, in the corporate world, we, was a, I kind of numbed a little bit, um, became the, the suit and tie and, and it was all about targets and, and, and I guess we kind of lost a little bit of, I kind of lost a bit of what, you know, why I really did what I did. And once we kicked off YOLO about two and a half years ago, we, I guess it became so apparent that you can actually do this however you want. Um, and, and then the blog, which, which only started about four months ago, I guess was an extension of trying to be a bit more authentic and, and really blur the lines between the professional and the, and, and what I do in the rest of my life so that I guess, um, you know, people can just, it's, it's all about building relationships. And I guess the blog was a bit of an extension of that. Fantastic. Cool. So, it, so the, but the blog sits under a different, it doesn't sit under, it's not a YOLO blog, right? It's like you've done that as a, as a separate thing. So how did you sort of land at that point? Yeah. So, um, mate, just going back a little bit, I guess I, I kind of subscribe to the Gary Vaynerchuk idea of becoming, being a media company and then your profession. So the way the world's going and, and it's, it's, it's more prevalent in our industry or profession, probably more than more than a lot. Is the technology is going to take over so much of what we do that we're going to be left with our ability to to build relationships, to build trust, to have influence. And so, um, I, I guess the that's that's probably one of the kickers to what what really got it started. But why I didn't go with the YOLO, I guess a lot of what I write about is fairly personal. Um, I'm I, I'm not. I guess I'm not scared to kind of just let everyone in a little bit. And, and so I've written, I've based the story and the, the name of the blog is Sufficient Funds. That kicked off, um, I guess that was born a very long time ago when we were road tripping around America and had no money, um, had the ATM slip with Insufficient Funds, thought it would be a good idea to start a T-shirt company. Um, and we sold some T-shirts with the name Insufficient Funds and that funded part of that road trip. And and from there, I guess this is now me looking back on it and saying, well, I've learned a lot over those last 10 years. It's, I've worked with a lot of millennials I've, and, and I guess now in, in financial advice, obviously can help people connect money to, to life. And so um, I've, I've placed a fairly heavy focus on the life aspect rather than the money aspect and kind of brought that in at, in at the back. But um, to go back to the, the splitting it out from YOLO, because we've got three partners and we're all very different personalities and so forth, um, it's probably not quite suitable. It's not the standard financial blog or that you that you'd probably find on, on most advisors' websites. And so 
Um, yeah, just wanted to go a whole lot deeper. And I think the only way to do that was, was to do it separate. And, and, but but keep, keep them, I mean, they're still very much um, aligned in that sense. I'm not, I'm not making money. I'm not seeing clients on a separate platform at all. You know, if anything, it's a, it's a benefit to the YOLO side of things um, from, a, from an avenue of um, you know, new clients and, and influence and so forth. James, just on that note, um, are you using the, the blog as a way to uh, escalate perhaps readers or subscribers into being uh, clients, financial advice clients? Is that, is that, and is that the main purpose of the blog or are you planning on monetizing it in, tra- in a traditional sense with like click-through ads or um, affiliate yeah. posts and things um, like that? So I- I probably, I, I mean, look, blogging, blogging does not come naturally to me. And, and it's something I think, you know, Ben and I had a chat um, probably 12 months ago and we'd just flown down to Melbourne and Ben had written two blogs on the flight. Um, and that blew my mind. The fact that anyone can sit down and write, like t- literally 12 months ago, I'd written three blogs in my life. Um, and, and I guess for me, it, it was really more about, I can't write about something if I'm not interested in it. And and so it's very much a personal thing. The goal is, you know, if, if it's monetized down the track, then, then that's fantastic. At the moment, my goal is to, to grow, the, grow the community um, and, and I guess see where it goes. There's a few, there's, there's all sorts of things you could probably do with it once you've got, got it really up and running and have a decent following. Um, but the, the, the only financial benefits that have come from it so far have been three clients. Um, okay. so, so yeah, I have, I have brought, and, and these are clients that, these are people that did know me, um, that I have been, um, you know, that, that know me from either being an advisor in a past life with them or, or something else. And I guess the blogs just, I guess, acted as a way to turn them on again and, and potentially, and I'm not sure really, but I think it's the personal side of things that's actually helped bring that through. Yeah, no, definitely. I, um, as, uh, someone who... Uh, writes for a living as well. Um, I think adding in that personal touch uh, makes you look human, especially in the finance world where a lot of us um, appear to be robots. So I agree with that. Um, I was, the other thing I was going to ask is, so you were saying at the moment you're concentrating on growing the following. Uh, are there any specific things that you're doing to promote the blog that um, other advisors that are in the same boat could be doing as well that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, so I've, I've got a couple of things. So, I mean, the standard social media channels we've, we've been on Facebook. I, to be honest, um, like, and, and one thing we learned from FinCon is that blogging, if, if you're really going to get a blog going, it's about 20% creation and, and 80% promotion. And that's where I've massively dropped the ball. I've spent most of the time creating and um, I, I guess juggling everything else in life and including running a business and starting a business and seeing clients. It's, you know, that's probably the area I've let, I've let go a bit. But Facebook, um, Instagram is, is just kicking off now um, and we're kind of doing different strategies between the two. But the main thing is a weekly email. Um, and so when I kicked it off, I, um, and this is probably a good note for anyone who's, who's looking to get started, is MailChimp is a really, really easy way and a cheap or free way if you've got up to, so for sending sending bulk emails. So um, I started with MailChimp. I downloaded every single email address I could find um, and took that from LinkedIn and Facebook in particular and then anywhere else. Now, don't don't just go and auto-subscribe everyone to your blog. That's, um, that's illegal and, and won't make you any friends, but... You can send them a one-off email. So you guys probably got it. Uh, actually, I know you did. Um, I know, I follow it. <laughs> so did probably a lot of others out there. But um, that was a one-off email just saying, look, this is what I'm doing. Click here if you want to get interested, get involved. And so uh, about 150 out of the 2,000 I emailed got onto it. Um, and it's grown to about 200 since then. Um, so very, very small list, to be honest. But... Um, I, I send a weekly email. It includes the blog link to whatever I've blogged that week. Um, I've, I've made it my mission to blog weekly because if I didn't do that, I think I'd find it really difficult to keep it going. Um, and so that, that's been the biggest challenge, the weekly blogging. Um, but yeah, 
Um, but then in that email, I'll just share a couple of other things, just some fun stuff like apps or, or articles I've found interesting. Um, try and keep it fun. I send it out on Sundays. It's called Sufficient Sundays. It goes out first thing in the morning and, and I get goal areas just to get people when they're, they're at home and, and, and create some value. Cool. cool. So what would you say, James, is the main purpose of the blog? Um, I think, look, ultimately it goes back to that idea of being a media company. It gives me the ability to grow my influence and, and test that out um, completely separate to being a financial advisor. I don't represent myself as a financial advisor on there. Um, and, and it's very, it's very heavily life focused and the money, the money, I guess, plugs in behind the scenes. So look, the main purpose I think is, um, look, for me, it was a challenge. I, I you know, as you can see, I've, I've never written in my life. I hated English at school. Um, and, and this, I, I, I've taught myself that I can actually enjoy it. Um, and it's one of those things where if you set it in the calendar and make it work. So, so that challenge initially was something that excited me coming out of FinCon, um, there are a lot of people making some phenomenal money doing this. So I'm not going to lie. If it turns into something that goes really well, then that's great. Um, and I, I would like to grow an audience and, and, you know, end up, I guess, potentially take that to a point where, you know, it gives me a platform to make a bigger difference. I mean, I know we all bang on about this stuff and it's fairly corny, but if you believe in the work you're doing, and, and you can reach more people by doing it. I think this is, that's, I guess that's a goal from, from the blog's perspective. Yeah, awesome. Okay, love that. Um, and so what do, you, what do you write about? And you mentioned that you've got this lifestyle focus, but can you give us some examples of the sorts of things that you, you're writing about? Yeah, so it's um, one of the things if you're going to blog, you, like, you really need to find that niche. Um, now, I've, I've focused very heavily on, on young people, um, millennials mainly. Um, and, and I guess some advice I got was create that avatar, have, a, have that one or two people in mind and whether they're, you know, someone that you actually know or just a make, make believe they've all got that certain, you know, whatever their problems are, whatever their goals are, focus on that and then write to that. And so I've, I've, I guess I'm looking back on my experience of, you know, whatever it might be, it's climbing the ladder in the corporate world, making the money work for you, but but not letting that get in the way of actually living. And so it it's it's probably you know there's there's blogs on there about how to have bigger adventures. There's blogs on there about how to link saving to actually achieving what you want. Um, how to find the right mentor. Um, all sorts of things that I guess are linked back to the experience that I've had. And and I guess. Um, you know, when I started this, I had no idea whether anyone would be interested in looking at it. Um, and, and so far, it's, it's been incredibly positive, um, which is actually, which has blown my mind. And it's the only reason I've been able to, I think, you know, I started about, it was about four months ago. I think I've written 20 blogs in 21 weeks. I had one week off. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that, that wasn't, the, that wasn't the week your daughter was born, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I started with the pass, if not unacceptable. <laughs> I started with a buffer of six. I, I wrote them all in January and and launched it late Feb. She was born early March and the six went to zero. So from six, <laughs> I didn't write, I didn't write six, I didn't blog in six weeks. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. And I'm still, I've got picking, it. I'm still picking up the pieces with all my clients as well. Yeah, good. Family first. <laughs> Um, so got, I just got a question on that same topic from Dylan, big daddy, Martin, uh, talking about like, you know, having regular content going out to your clients is, is something that we all know can be rewarding, but how do you keep the, how do you keep the content fresh and, and not repetitive and, and, and I suppose more broadly, like how do you just, how do you go about choosing your content or what you're going to write about? Yeah. So, so the content specifically is, um, I plan it out. Um, Tash, my wife, helps me a lot with this as well. She's very organised, where I'm not so much. So it's a um, we we sit down probably once a month and just think about um, what what it might be and and how is it relevant to it. So um, the starting point for me was the idea was I'd create the chapters in the book that I potentially wanted to write. 
and and then start blogging to fill that. Um, now that hasn't necessarily been exactly how I followed it, but it gave me a good starting point for finding things to write about. Um, but the planning is the key, planning ahead so you don't sit down with a blank sheet with no idea what you're going to write about. Um, because I, I mean, I know I've tried that and it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Um, so having a good idea, but the key with content of keeping it fresh is you have to find something that you're interested about, interested in. Um, yeah. So Dylan, mate, if you were going to do it yourself, I'd be I'd be going hard on the fishing and the lifestyle, <laughs> and then link link that however you want to the money side of things, and that you know that's what I'd be doing. Cool. So look, I am keen to dive into the process that you use uh, around this, but. Um, just another follow-up question. This one's also from Dylan, just around your, what your stats look like, open rates, read subscribers, that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, so it started, open rates started at, so I've got, I've got about 200, um, subscribers on and the get the weekly email, um, open rates started at about 75% and they're currently sitting at about 50, um, they dropped significantly just over the last few weeks. And so um, if anyone's out there that needs to find those, they'll be in your junk mail. There's, uh, I've had a few issues with that. Um, but, yeah, so just working through that sort of things. But I, I, what I'm told, that's pretty good. Um, but I do understand that most people reading it actually know me, so they're probably fairly interested in it. Um, it would be a different story if I had... A bunch of randoms that had signed up and and you know potentially not not really um, you know we're, we're, we're newer to the story I guess um, so so that's yeah. open rates click rates on the email there's usually three or four links um, the blog and article and something else potentially in the email um, they're they're around twenty percent um, in total which I've also heard is pretty good but um, I'm, I'm is only that putting is that an effective click through, or is that is that the total click through is twenty percent? Um, that's total click through. Okay, so that's awesome because if you got fifty percent of people opening it and twenty percent of people clicking, that means you got forty percent of people clicking, right? The people that opened it. Correct. Yeah. So, so at least clicking something. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's one person clicking everything, and I've got a few people that click everything every week, um, but. Yeah. Um, it's, it, yeah, it varies. That'd be Tomo, I'd say. A <laughs> uh, uh, question, follow up question, quick one from Phil. He's asking how many blogs Tash has written for you? <laughs> Two. Two in full. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> Staring but, up. but how many, how many Tomo. She's, finished, she's finished off probably 50% of them. So she edits every single one. Um, because I don't trust myself and she pulls out all the swear words and all the other stuff. And, um, <laughs> on, on, that, on that note, um, you talked, you touched a little bit on this before you said you hated English at school um, and writing didn't come naturally to you. How important do you think the technical side of writing is to being a good blogger? Um, especially for, say, advisors that are tuning in today that that may want to step into this or dip their toes in the water here but are a bit scared because they don't think they're a confident writer. Do you, yeah. how, how important do you think uh, it is on the scale? Um, and um, how did you teach yourself to be confident at it if it was something you naturally didn't want to do? So um, I don't even know what technical writing is. Um, so, I, I just mean like, yeah, yeah, just... But no, 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 I, I know, but if, if I was kind of... But yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess the, the short answer to that is definitely, um, you definitely don't, in my opinion, need to have any technical writing skills. Um, the, the key here is your personality will shine through it anyway. If I've got any sort of communication skills, I've learned it from being with clients and talking to people regularly, and that's... And that, that maybe flows out into, into how I write. But, um, you know, it, the, the thing that keeps me writing it and that makes it work for me is the fact that I like what I'm writing about. And I think that's the key to remember is if you have something. And, and the one thing that we struggle with as advisors is that storytelling aspect. So, it, you know, we, we've got the technical knowledge. It's fairly easy to sit down and write about what income protection is. But, but actually turning that into a story is the thing that you need to find if you're going to create the resonance that will build build a platform, build the build the audience. So, 
Um, you know, I think I think FinCon's probably a good at um, a good sort of when you go to FinCon, you see that there's all these people and they're they're randoms, they're weirdos, they're writing, but they've got massive followings. They don't necessarily write well. Um, but they're yeah. writing about something that's important to them, whether they've just cleared a hundred grand of student debt or something else that, you know, they've managed to live the life while the husband was away on a, on a ship overseas and you know, whatever it is, there's a story there that means something to them. And so then that, that builds a following. And I think that's an area where we could really start to grow in the financial services side of things and get our personalities out there because that's the one thing that's seriously lacking. And, and if we don't find that as an industry, that we will really struggle once technology takes over the investment management side of our jobs. Absolutely. Yeah, you're 100% right, actually. I think that's, that's the whole transition of the financial advisor now into being more of a financial coach or, a, a, I guess, a, a client, like a relationship person versus just a pure investment manager. Um, so I think... You know, but like Phil just uh, wrote in the in the box, like he's uh, he's been avoiding doing this stuff because he doesn't feel great at it. But I think the only way advisors um, uh, will uh, will will get that piece, that relationship piece, is just giving it a go. Um, and it's cool to see, yeah. I mean, you know uh, personally that I read your blog and I love it. Um, so uh, whatever you're doing to give it a go is is pretty damn good. So. <laughs> Well, so, uh, yeah. like, have you found, James, that in that, so you've been doing it for four months that, that you've improved? Because I know, like, I've been doing blogs, like, you know, not, not weekly, but for about two years. And, it, and yeah, I feel now, uh, after doing it, I found that the more time you get under your belt, the easier it becomes and you feel like your writing gets better and your topics get more interesting. And, um, yeah, are you uh, finding that with yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in, in the four months, like, I've, I mean, it's, it hasn't been a steady slope in the right direction, but it's definitely way better than it was when I started. I think that, you know, I've, I've gone through points where I had nothing to write about and I forced myself to do it. Um, the, the way I do it is, is once a week, hopefully early in the week, um, unless the surf's good, is, is just literally sit down at 6 a.m., set the alarm, get up early, and smash it out and and sometimes it's done in an hour sometimes it's three hours later and i haven't finished um but but putting that one time a week in the calendar and then dealing with it if i have to later has been the only way that i've been able to make it work and um yeah def, definitely i i mean when i first wrote i actually reread the email that i sent to everyone the other day and i i would have changed so much about that if i was writing it now um yeah. but that, don't let that worry you that's that's the process you've got to go through i think yeah. Oh, cool. So like, in, so in terms of the process, you mentioned before that you had this bit of a, like a framework in terms of the content ideas that you wanted to cover. Um, and then you're saying you put this time aside, you know, once a week, do you do, you know, cause I've heard a few people that um, talk about using like a, an outline for the blog or a structure before you do it, or do you just do it start to finish in one go and that's it, it's done. Um, that, again, that's a, that, that changes a little bit. There's no set process for me. Now, some people follow very strict processes. I'm, I'm not generally one of those. Um, the, and probably the reason for that is sometimes I get halfway through a blog and it changes because something else came into my mind and I, I decided to go off on a tangent and, and potentially out of that one, you know, out, out of a half-written blog, I might actually have two or three. Um, and then I might just split them, park it and go and finish one of them. Um, so there's a, there's a fairly broad outline of what I want to do. Sometimes I'll start and actually literally write intro, put the points, um, potentially what ends up being subheadings and then wrap it up um, and then fill it out. But that's my, my go-to is, is have the idea in my head and just start writing. Yeah. Um, cool. But that may, that may not work for everyone. Yeah, I think, you, I think you find what works for you. I know that when I do it now, I try to, I try to just put dot points of, of the, the topic ideas, like the, how I want to structure it and what I want to cover. But you're right in that sometimes you get writing and you, you pick up on an idea and then you just go down a tangent and, you, and it's good. Well, you think, at least you think it's good. Um, so you, you, you sort of push, pursue it. Um, but I find that helps. And I think that's, I think that's a, a good point that you just got to, 
you just got to find what works for you. And the only way that you're going to find it is um, by, you know, doing it as well. Like I know Phil Thompson, he, he was asking those questions before about doing blogs and he, and he hasn't really done blogging, but he's done probably more videos on financial advice than anyone else I know. And uh, I know that he's learned a lot from the ones that he makes sort of makes fun of himself now with, you know, the stuff that he used to cover, super technical, little on the boring side, but still got results out of it. But now he's improved, take it, changed it, changed the way he does it, doesn't use scripts now, you know, all of that stuff. So I think that the takeout from, from what you're saying is that you just got to do it and then learn and improve and find what works for you. That's absolutely right, mate. And, yeah, Phil um, Phil does create some pretty good good videos. And, you know, I remember seeing Phil's two, three years ago and, and what they are now is, is phenomenal compared to that, but it doesn't mean that was a waste of time that I got into that point. So, yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes you just got to do it. You just got to get – you just got to get the crap, crap out of the way and um, use that to, to improve. Like I'm at a point at the moment where I've never been juggling more in my life and I don't, I don't think, I mean, that saying if you, give, if you want something done, give it to a busy person, it's, it's, like it's something that I've realised and I'll, I've re-realised now. Like we started YOLO with a fairly heavy lifestyle um, you know, point and, and, and we ended up building a, a remote business where we can, we can kind of work the hours we want and do all of that, but that's all been blown out of the water with um, with a daughter and trying to write a blog, but it's but I'm still enjoying it. I haven't surfed much recently, um, but but the fact that you you're actually having a crack at it, and I think it's that old thing about progression. Um, as humans, if we're progressing and we're growing, we're more fulfilled, and so that that's definitely a, definitely a result I'm seeing. Yeah, awesome. Love it. So you mentioned before, like you you take yours, you block out this bit of time, and then try to get through most of the blog. It take, takes you from one to three hours. We've got Amy. She's asking about how long it takes. Is that is that all the time that you would spend? And then what happens from there? So um, we so we started the blog on WordPress, um, and it's it's hosted. It's very cheap. Um, you can host it through it. Like there's there's many of them. I use Bluehost. It's like two dollars a month. Um, it's fairly dodgy, but it works. Um, WordPress is, is, is free. You buy a theme, um, and, and you get started. So from my process is I, I edit or I start the blog in Google docs. I then share it with Tash. Once I think I've finished it, she edits it a little bit. Um, and then we chuck it straight into WordPress. Um, I've started working through the SEO um, side of things now and, and trying to make that work a lot better for me. So um, there's a plugin inside WordPress called Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, which basically does the basic work for you. It tells you where you should be putting more of the words. You choose the keyword that you're trying to write about. Um, so that, that stuff's getting a little bit technical, but we go through that process. That, that doesn't take long. Um, it's probably from taking it from Google Docs to actually publishing it in in WordPress takes about an hour. Um, so putting it in, getting the SEO right, um, maybe rejigging a couple of the headings or something, and then finding a photo uh, and or maybe sometimes two photos um, and then publishing. Um, the photo side of things, I would, um, if you guys, uh, I know you guys are probably all over this, but um, anyone out there, if you're not on AppSumo and, and their email list, get on it. Um, they've got all sorts of good stuff that comes through that would be relevant in your financial planning business as well as if you're starting a blog or anything else like that. But um, I got the deposit photos for, like, I think it's $39 and you get, a, I think it's 150 downloads of any photo you want and they've got thousands of photos so anything we're ever looking for um it's very easy to find it get the colors right do all of that and then and then publish okay so tech stack are using mailchimp for sending your emails out so i started with mailchimp to send the one-off email i've actually moved to convert kit so everyone um Everyone who clicked that link in the MailChimp email then went to a lead pages site where they put their email address in actually opt in. That lead pages site was linked to ConvertKit 
rather than Mailchimp. Um, now, whether that was the right decision or not, I'm still I'm still not sure. Mailchimp is free. Um, convert kit. I pay thirty bucks a month for it. Um, there is a bit more in the. It's very heavily blog focused, um, and I, I wouldn't say use it in your financial services business. So I'd use something like Active Campaign um, to to manage all of the deals and leads that you can that you can work through with your email list inside the business. Um, but ConvertKit is then the hub for where we build the email. Um, so the email that goes out weekly is done through there and that, that gives you all the stats on open rates and click rates and who's, who's forwarded it, all of that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and then you can set up all sorts of good stuff in there that I haven't done yet, um, like the sequences of emails. So if I wanted to launch a product, for, for example, or, or do a one-month um, money challenge or something like that, then I could start to drip feed that out through an email sequence to the right people. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff in there. I'm, I'm very much a beginner though in that area. Cool. So I got a question um, from Tomo who's asking, are you tracking like your the topics that are popular on the blog or do you just measure overall click rates, click through that sort of stuff? Um, it's not something I've got into yet, um, but I definitely should. I've got I've got a fairly long list of um, should have done or need to do uh, at the moment, um, and that's the type of thing that's included. So you can you can track um, you know who clicks on what, and um, it's actually quite easy through the through the email at least. Um, the blog itself, it's very easy through Google Analytics to go and get the the most popular pages. Um, and that sort of thing. So while I'm not effectively looking at it regularly, I could I could jump in there and get that now and and quite quickly see what's been the best topic. Okay, cool. Um, and oh, and then I, you mentioned before about getting a couple of clients out of it. How is that? How has that all happened? Um, so they they got the initial email, um, and so they were part of my LinkedIn list, I think, initially, and. So started reading it and, and it was fairly early on actually. It was when I, because, I mean, I guess when I launched the blog, it was more about the about page and there wasn't much else on there. So um, anyone who was reading it was getting the, the, very, um, the very personal why did I set this up type thing. And yep. so three, two or three approached me almost straight away um, and that was more out of, you know, we're not happy with our current advisor. We've seen what you're doing. Um, let's get back in touch um, so not brand new fresh clients but from from one of those that's got back in touch who used to be a phenomenal referrer for me um, has now sent me two more clients so I guess it's it's one of those things where um, you're not really sure where it'll lead but the, it, you know the, the result of that is is driven by by the personal side of things and letting that out that's that's all I can take from that I think is that you know, they knew I was an advisor. They knew I had a business that I could help them, um, but they they hadn't, for whatever reason, come and got involved. Um, but the trigger, from my mind, was the start of the blog, and I've told a lot of personal stuff, and they liked it, and and I guess that was it. Yeah, cool. I think it's sort of like the. Um it's almost like the virtual tap on the shoulder, which I think it is with a lot of platforms as well, especially if you've got someone that you've connected with in the past or um, you've spoken to about some stuff, but they've stalled. If you're there, if you're constantly there, then when, you know, you're, you're giving them a gentle reminder and it's better that, you know, you could follow up with people and say like, I know we do it in our business that um, we used to follow up with people. Now I don't follow up with people after our initial meetings, but they get, they get our newsletter every month. And, you know, the, the number of times that people have turned around as a result of that with, you know, oh, yeah, I read that blog, yeah, I know I need to do this thing. Um, mm. You know, I think I think that's a, a big benefit in it as well. Do you transition people? When you see people at YOLO, do you put them into sufficient funds and to your mailing list? No, I, I haven't added anyone to the list. I'm only doing, I'm only letting people get in if they want to. Um, they'll, they'll go and subscribe. I, I haven't, I could. Um, we, de we definitely add them to our own mailing list inside YOLO and I guess that's where they stay until 
potentially they see it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's a mistake. I could, I could definitely do that, whether it's right or wrong. I'm not sure yet, but um, it's certainly something I kept almost completely separate. Yeah. Yeah. James, I've got a question for you. You mentioned um, FinCon before um, and uh, that there's like, you know, hundreds of amazing people doing amazing things over there. Um, and a and bunch of crazy Aussies that are going to annoy everyone. Right. Uh, and I can I cannot wait to be one of them. Um, <laughs> but uh, the the personal finance blogging space is, seems to be very crowded at the moment. Like it's a really popular space. Um, everyone's doing it. Um, maybe not specifically in advice, but um, you know, uh, at a higher level in financial services or just personal finance, you're seeing a lot of that, especially in technology. Um, what advice could would you give the people listening today um, about standing out in that in that crowd? Um, because you're doing it really well, um, and and I I could list the reasons why from a marketing perspective why you're quite on brand um, because you're quite niche and it's this surfy chilled out lifestyle thing and it works really well. Um, but for someone who's not like that, uh, do you have um, any other tips for them? Um, I. You, you really have to double down on what you what your story is, and uh, like seriously, like my I don't I don't think my lifestyle or, or that side of things is potentially that attractive. But it's well, maybe like maybe some of it is, but I think I I, I focus on that because it's what I enjoy talking about, and I think you've just got to find, and it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it, you know, there are so many people out there looking for answers. Like my blog isn't going to resonate with everyone. There's absolutely no way that would be the case. Um, and so, and clearly it isn't because it's not growing at any uh, rapid pace, but um, it's, I, I think you find your own story. You've got to find exactly what, what's that passion. And, you know, it, it doesn't have to be money. You can have a separate blog about something. People find out you're a financial advisor. They'll, they'll come there because they like you. It's not because you're telling them how to fix their savings account or credit card or, or where to invest. Um, no one gives it, a, doesn't, no one cares at all about the, the content from a financial perspective. The, the benefit is the fact that you're sharing valuable stories and, and you're passionate about something. So that's what comes through, I think, potentially from my perspective. Um, and Look, where, how I got to all that is I, I, I sat down. It didn't just come to me. I didn't, I didn't some, one day think, oh, you know, I've got so much information in my head about this one sort of topic and thing that I need to write about it. It was, it was sitting in, at FinCon and seeing all these other people were doing it and, and then realising that, you know what, I have, if I sit down and plan it out, and, and that was what it was. There was no definite I need to write a blog. It was more... Well, what what does this look like, and what could it turn into? Um, and and do I have do, do I have the initiative and the and the motivation to make it happen? Um, and I guess it was a test. Do you have a personal challenge? I hope I do, mate. Um, I I'll certainly force myself. I got up at six this morning and wrote my first guest blog, and um, that was that was a bit of a mission because like writing for my platform, I'm fine with, but I don't write uh, necessarily the way some others do, and so writing for someone else was a was a new um, thing. But yeah, getting up and having a crack at it, I think was the, was was something. I you know, it's the only way to do it. Nice. And so um, I've got a, another question here from from Glenn James. He's just asking about if you re like. Uh, I suppose it's it's probably a little early on in the piece, but have you thought about you know? Um, recycling content and just like reproducing stuff that you've already like covered if it's still relevant? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've probably at the moment as close as I've got to that is as I'm writing blogs, it might have three or four subheadings and that one subheadings then turned into a bigger blog. Um, you know, I was writing about defining sufficient um, and I think that's the blog that went out last week and, and it's what is sufficient in your life. And I was talking about the one of those is finding time. Um, and right now I'm halfway through a blog where I'm stealing Phil Thompson's content and talking about 
his, his video where he talked about time being the most important asset. Um, and so linking those two and, and I guess just expanding on those themes is probably as far as I've got into that at the moment, Glenn. But, um, you know, I've, I've recycled a couple of blogs I've written for other platforms, like one from YOLO that worked quite well a few years ago. I've adapted that and put it into, into it, um, but only because it made sense for the actual theme of it. Awesome. And uh, so top three tips for someone looking to get started? Um, do it cheaply. So don't like, just because you're a financial advisor and you may be making good money, don't, don't go and blow money on, on all the things that you can do to make your blog amazing. Just start with a cheap post, start with WordPress. I'd recommend it's what 98% of people at FinCon use. Um, and, um, and just, just get started. So do it cheaply, get started, and you want, one more. you want one more. Um, find, so actually plan it out, like find, find the story, find what, you, what you're passionate about, figure that out, create the avatar or the idea of who you're actually writing to, um, and then just do it. I, I, got, I got advice, and it was mainly around, the, the advice I got about starting was, don't worry about what the site looks like because no one is literally no one is going to go and read your blog in the first probably two or three months except your friends. And mm. so don't like just get, get used to writing, shove it out there in the, in the public forum, get past that first initial barrier of, of, of you know, being a bit nervous about putting yourself out there. Test it out. Don't throw money at it because you might hate it. Um, and I, and I thought I would, to be honest. Um, but yeah, after that, then, then start to plan the promotion of it and how you, how you spread the word. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, cause you probably, you're probably going to be a bit rusty at the start. You probably don't want to, uh, you know, have this awesome promotion thing and you get it in front of thousands of eyeballs and they say, oh, holy crap, like what is this stuff? Uh, so exactly. take it as a test, I think, and move on. And I think that's really important about, you know, find your, um, find your voice. One of the, the best tips that I got about blogging is um, to have a, write down a list of the things. What are the things that you believe that, that I believe that other people don't? Then you get that sort of that contrarian angle to, to what other people are saying, but it's effectively, it's a flip side of what you're saying in that that's your unique sort of angle. And I think if you focus on that, it's mainly about personality, as you said, more than content. So that's what people are going to connect with. Um, and I think that's what's missing from a lot of There's no point just churning out content on how to make a concessional contribution or how to um, set up an investment account or buy shares. Like any, all of that information is already online a thousand times over. Yeah, and if you, if you start doing that, Google will hammer you because everyone's done it already and the banks have got it all on their sites and, you know, th that's the type of thing. You, you, I mean, your idea of blogging and, and having that contrary view is, is exactly what you need to do. Um, I think there was a WTF is financial advice blog uh, yeah. at some point in time. It came out from Ben Nash. That you know, that's the kind of shit you need to put out there. Is just make it like shake it up, make it a bit random, um, and, and be yourself. I'm actually really bad at headlines. It's one of the things that I struggle <laughs> with most. But I came up with that one all by myself, and I was so happy with myself when I did. So, uh, but yeah, I think it's it, you got to find your voice. It's important, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, James, thank you very much for joining us and sharing today. Some great tips in there. Um, check out James's blog, sufficientfunds.com. Is it funds with a Z because he's super cool? Yeah. Funds with a Z because I'm a loser and I couldn't find, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't afford sufficient funds with an S because they wanted two and a half grand for it. Um, <laughs> sufficient funds with a Z.com. I like it with the Z. I think it looks cool. Well, so we call that YOLO, so we figured we could probably get away with it. Stick to it. Yeah. Stick to it. There you go. Well, Team X, why don't we see if we can uh, double James's subscriber base? Um, uh, he's on 200, so I think we'll, uh, we, could, we could probably give we that enough. We can at least get him to 1,000. Come on, guys. Let's yeah. start. <laughs> that would blow my mind. Yeah. So, um, also, mate, thank you. Uh, really appreciate you sharing. Great to hear some great tips in there. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. 
Um, everybody, uh, jump on the line next week. We've got Chris Hockey, and he's talking about how to turn a one-man band into a national financial uh, advice business. Should be pretty interesting. We've got the main man, Phil Thompson, back in the chair. Uh, so check it out. Streaming live through the Facebook group, uh, the XY Advisor Facebook group. Uh, and, yeah, look, look look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks again to our mates at AIA for their support of uh, XY Live. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, James. Bye, guys. Bye.